Hey everybody, welcome back. This lesson discusses the procedural factors that affect image contrast in radiography. First, some definitions. Image contrast refers to the visible difference in brightness levels on the radiograph. High contrast is generally preferable as this makes anatomical structures more easily visible. Procedural factors, in this context, simply refers to the variables that the technologist can control as a part of the exposure. The operator's choice of KVP, collimation, and grid ratio all have an effect on image contrast. Before we discuss this any further, you should know this. These procedural factors only have a small influence on image contrast. Why is that? Because computer processing algorithms are very good at creating image contrast regardless of the operator's selection. In digital radiography, computer processing is the most important factor determining image contrast. To understand how these procedural factors influence image contrast, we do need to understand how image contrast is created. Image contrast exists because of the signal difference in the remnant beam. We call this differential attenuation. Basically, different body structures attenuate the beam at different levels. For example, in this radiograph of the abdomen, low density areas like this bowel gas attenuate only a little radiation, so a high radiation signal exits the patient in this area. Medium density areas like the liver and spleen attenuate more radiation, so lower radiation signal exits the patient in these areas. Finally, high density areas like the spine attenuate the most radiation, so a much lower signal exits the patient in these areas. These differences in radiation signal intensities strike the image receptor. They are measured by the computer system and converted into different brightness levels within the radiographic image. This is how image contrast is created. Different signal intensities from different structures become different brightness levels in the image. High signal difference, that's a high level of differential attenuation, becomes high contrast in the image. A low signal difference, that's a low level of differential attenuation, becomes low image contrast. KVP, grids, and collimation all influence the difference in signal intensity striking the image receptor, but in different ways. Changing the KVP affects the signal difference in the remnant beam. When the KVP becomes too high for the part being imaged, the part is overly penetrated and the signal differences exiting the patient are very small. It's possible for the signal difference to be so similar that the computer cannot detect any differences and the resulting image contrast is degraded. Fortunately, modern radiography systems are so good at detecting these signal differences, that's the differential attenuation, that changes in KVP have only a very tiny effect on image contrast. The computer system can create high image contrast even when the signal differences are very small. Increasing KVP also increases the proportion of scatter produced in the patient. Scatter radiation is not good because these photons are no longer in line with the rest of the x-ray beam. As a result, scatter radiation creates a layer of noise in the image that disrupts the visibility of the patient's anatomy. The specific issue is a decrease in signal differences and therefore a decrease in image contrast. Scatter radiation interferes with the computer's ability to detect and display different signal intensities in the remnant beam. Scatter is like a fog. On a bright, sunny day, the landscape is clearly visible. But on a foggy day, the landscape is still there, but the fog obscures the visibility of the landscape. Scatter is exactly like this. It creates a layer of meaningless noise in the radiograph that obscures the visibility of the underlying anatomy. So what can we do about scatter? That's where grids come in. A grid is placed between the patient and the image receptor to absorb scatter radiation before it strikes the image receptor. Grids do not decrease the production of scatter within the patient, but they do remove scatter from the beam before it strikes the image receptor. This helps maintain high signal difference in the remnant beam and increases the resulting image contrast. Increasing contrast is the very reason that we use grids. Here's an example. The abdomen image on the left was created without a grid. This led to a lot of scatter on the image, lots of gray, and therefore very low image contrast. When the image is repeated with a grid, the result is different. 
a significant amount of scatter is removed from the image and contrast is increased. We can increase the grid ratio again from 5 to 1 to 10 to 1 and even more scatter radiation will be removed from the radiograph and even higher image contrast will be achieved. The only disadvantage of using a higher ratio grid is that exposure techniques must be increased and the patient dose will increase. The general relationship between grids and image contrast looks like this. If we increase the grid ratio, this decreases the amount of scatter reaching the image receptor and therefore increases the image contrast. As usual, we can say that the opposite is also true. If we decrease the grid ratio or don't use a grid, this will increase the amount of scatter reaching the image receptor and therefore decrease the image contrast. Anything that increases the amount of scatter getting to the receptor will always decrease the image contrast. Here's a quick practice question so you can test your knowledge. What is the most important factor influencing image contrast in digital radiography? The correct answer is D, computer processing. KVP, grid ratio, even patient size all have an influence on image contrast, but computer processing has the greatest influence. Modern radiography systems are so effective at measuring signal differences in the remnant beam that other factors have a much smaller effect on image contrast. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to visit CloverLearning.com and explore our robust selection of video-based courses, certification exam prep question banks, and continuing education resources. Lastly, please remember to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on our latest videos.